Uh, we will talk about returning to the Lord. Amen. Returning to the Lord. Okay. Um, kung uh, kayo po, may, sino po dito may mga computers, mga iPad, iPhone. Naku, tumatawag po yung auntie ko. Uh, okay. Kung meron po kayong mga ganito, go to YouTube. At uh, sa YouTube po, ay um, click nyo po ang mga great men that the Lord has used uh, in the past revivals. Uh, Doon po natin makikita ang pagkilos ng Panginoon sa kanilang buhay. And by listening sa mga documentaries na nangyari in the past, uh, in a way, tayo po ay uh, magkakaroon ng desire o kaya iinit po pagliliyabhin ni Lord ang ating puso sa ginawa niya sa nakaraan at we will expect more sa gagawin niya sa ating hinaharap. Okay. <clears throat> I want to share to you a man na ginamit ng Panginoon in, in, the, in the past revivals noong 1904 in the Welsh Revival. At ang ginawa po, nag-research po ako talaga sa buhay ng taong ito. And uh, almost uh, every other night, pinapakinggan ko po yung documentary niya. And I was so blessed. I was so blessed po sa ginawa ng Panginoon sa taong ito. So in 1904, uh, isa pong uh, batang uh, Bible school student ng pangalan po niya ay Evan Roberts, bigla po niyang nadama ang urgency na nanggaling po sa Spiritu ng Diyos. At kanya pong binubuhos Araw-araw ang kanyang puso at spirito sa ating Panginoon. At siya'y nananalangin. At sa panalangin po niya, sabi niya, Lord God, magpadala ka ng revival sa Welsh. Sa Wales, sabi po niya ganun. Magpadala ka po ng revival dito sa Wales, sa Great Britain. At siya po'y nananalangin, God, give us 100,000 souls, sabi niya. And ang bata pong ito, he is on his teenage years, about 17 years old ata siya. At habang hindi na po siya makapagpahinga sa burden na to na nasa kanyang puso, siya po ay nag-decide from Bible school ay to Miguel at umuwi muna sa kanyang bayan. At uh, pumunta po sa kanyang home church. At hiningi po niya sa kanyang pastor, sabi niya, Pastor, Uh, ang, ang bigat po nang nadaram ako na I'm praying that you're gonna send revival that God will send revival in our church sabi niya ganun Robert soon returned to, to his home church to preach the message of revival but his pastor was reluctant to allow him to speak at the church so sabi po ng pastor niya in compromise what the pastor did The pastor announced that after the service this morning, Roberts want to speak at our regular prayer meeting in the afternoon, sabi niya. So, if you are interested to come and hear him speak, please come so in the afternoon. So, what happened, yung pong hapon na yun, in that afternoon, only 17 young people came to hear what even Roberts is about to say. And most of them are teenagers and young adults. Ako po ay mag-i-English dahil mayroon po tayong bisitang uh, ano ba niyaga dito, no? Uh, naunawaan niyo naman po yung English, di po ba? Amen? Okay. Now, when Roberts was finished speaking, all 17 young people were at the altar on their knees, <coughs> crying out to God. They prayed until 2 a.m. Imagine, imagine that meeting started at 2 p.m. And then it went on. The conviction and the power of God fell upon them and they stayed up to 2 in the morning that night. And it was the beginning of one of the greatest movements of God in all the history. By the end of the week, over 60 people were won to Christ. And over the course of the next year and a half, 
after one year and a half, revival swept the nation of Wales, and there were about one million people were led to the saving faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. The revival was so great that the national culture changed dramatically. Bigla po, napakalakas ng pagbabago. A rage of bankruptcy took place. All of the taverns and liquor stores went out of business. Lahat po ng mga nightclubs, lahat po ng nagbebenta ng alak, nasara. Amen? Hallelujah! Because revival came upon the nation. Na bankrupt po yung mga nightclubs. And then, work on the coal mines was brought to a near standstill. Napekto rin po yung mga miners. The mules who pulled the wagons were so accustomed to hearing foul language from the workers that after the men were saved, the mules no longer recognized their voice or commands. Why? Because they, you know what? Because they changed. Kasi po yung mga, alam niyo po yung mules, yung mga, yung mga donkey na nag, nagpupul ng wagon pag uh, nahakot po nila yung mines, itong mga miners. Uh, kapag kinokomand po nila yung mga donkey ito, mga mules na to, puro mura ang kanilang naririnig. Kaya pag naririnig nila yung mura, nag obey po yung mules. Pero dumating po ang presensya ng Panginoon. Lahat ng mga miners na save, nagbago. E ngayon, wala na po silang pagmumurang lumalabas sa bibig nila. So, ang lumalabas po yung, Okay, come on, pull this up. Hallelujah, pull this up. Ayaw po mag-obey ng mga donkey. <laughs> Dahil hindi po sila sanay sa ganun na pagbabago ng mga miners. They have to listen for the, for the what? Pagmumura ng mga taong ito. So what the miners did, they have to reprogram the mules to be accustomed to what? To decent language. Hallelujah. Amen. Nireprogram muna po nila bago ito nag-obey. So nakita natin dito kung gaano katindi ang dumating na revival sa Wales. Are you there? Amen. So the entire police force was dismissed for almost 18 months. Why? Because there were no crimes. Hallelujah. Nasarado po yung police station kasi walang krimen. Amen. <laughs> Ito po, may isang bagay na nangyari sa court cases. One of the few court cases that was actually brought before a judge was unusual. The defendant came into the court and admitted his guilt. Hindi na po kailangan magkaroon ng hearing. Agad suma, dumako siya doon, sabi niya, I'm guilty. Akong may sala. Imagine that strong conviction of sin. Hello? Admitted of his guilt and the judge led the man to Christ. At ito pong guilty taong ito, the judge said, okay, come, I want you to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Hanggang tinanggap po ng taong ito ang Panginoon. The judge led the man to Christ and the jury closed and the case was dismissed by singing a praise song unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Nakikita ko po nagbabago yung mukha. Amen. Isn't it wonderful if these things are happening in our midst today? Amen. Amen. Pero what is happening to the church? When I speak of the church, the body of Christ, what is happening to the body of Christ today? Our church has fallen on desperate times. But not because of attendance, money, or lack of involvement. We are in desperate times because we desperately need a movement of God Almighty. And no one seems to realize it. We went on to business as usual, attending the church. Doing what we used to do just to attend the church. Listen, cry a little bit, sing a little bit, praise the Lord, and then go out of the church and then back to normal. 
Hello? Hello? What do you feel now? Ano kaya nadarama natin ngayon? Is our hearts burning with passion for our love for, for the Lord? Is it burning? Do we have that burning desire after Jesus? Are we so much and deeply in love or intimately in love with the Lord? Are we always broken when we come to God? When we come before Him? Are we broken? Alam niyo po ba why revival came to Wales? You know what even Robert prayed for? He just kept saying, Bend me Lord, bend me Lord, bend me Lord, bend me Lord. Baliin mo ako, Panginoon. Bend me. Baliin mo ako. Bend me according to your will. Bend me, Lord God. Bend my selfishness. Bend my pride. Bend my unforgiveness, Lord. Bend my bitterness. This is the prayer of this young man. That's why revival came. There's that burning desire in his heart after the will of God. There's that burning desire in his heart for obedience. Where are we right now? Now, if you have your Bibles, open them to Hosea 6, verses 1 to 3. Or let us read this. Ato pong sinasabi ng verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but He will heal us. He has endured us, but He will bind us up our wounds after two days he will revive us on the third day he will restore us that we may live in his presence let us acknowledge the Lord let us press on to acknowledge him as surely as the Sun rises he will appear he will come to us like the winter rains like the spring rains that water the earth Ano pong sinasaad ng mga talatang ating binasa? Amen. There is that an invitation to return. An paanyaya na tayo'y bumalik loob sa Panginoon. An invitation to return. Sinasabi, come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but He will heal us. He has endured us, but He will bind up our wounds. The invitation to return. Hosea opens this message with the word, Come as an open invitation to all of the people of Israel. This invitation is also to all people around the world. To all people in this congregation. Starting with me, sa lahat ng miembro. It is important that Hosea ministered during a spiritual turbulent time in the nation of Israel. The kingdom of David was divided into two separate nations, the northern kingdom of Israel and the, uh, and, and the southern kingdom of Judah. Hosea was a prophet to the northern kingdom. The invitation was to live in the ways of God. It was an invitation to come back to the ways that the people knew were right. Amen? There's not only an invitation to return, but there's also a call to return. Panawagan na manumbalik loob tayo sa Diyos. When Hosea uses the word, let us, this is a call. He speaks in clear terms here to communicate to those who needed to return to the Lord. We're not alone. This is for all of us. In some way, all of us are in need of renewal. Do you agree? Amen? Tayong lahat ay nangangailangan ng panibagong sigla. Amen po ba? Amen. We all have room to grow spiritually and to be refreshed by the power and presence of God. More importantly, Hosea tells the people, to return to the Lord. Idolatry had become a standard practice in Israel. 
and the people were worshiping idols instead of God. We have a difficult time understanding this. The people dropped their convictions and left their beliefs behind. Now, how many times have you given up a conviction for convenience? Sometimes when we attend the church and then we hear the message and then the convicting power of the Holy Spirit start to convict, uh, convict us and then we would, we would be convicted for a moment only. Once we get out of that door, then we are again after convenience. God is calling us to return. God is inviting us to return. Come to me into that secret place of intimacy. Come to me into that secret place of prayer. Panginoon, I'm already very sleepy. I have been tired for the whole day. Panginoon, ang pagod-pagod ko na eh. Ang dami kong inasikaso. Ang sakit pa ng balakang ko, ang ulo ko. I'm sorry, Lord God. Lord God, bless my family. Bless me, Lord God. Bless, bless, bless. In Jesus' name, amen. It's just a recital of prayer. But no reality of that intimacy and coming back to our first love for the Lord. God is inviting us. God is calling us to return and come. How many times have you changed what you believe to gain some sort of benefit? Alam niyo po nakakalungkot? If you are attending this church just to have a benefit, Alin ba kaya dito mga influential na tao? Kailangan makilala ko eh. Kailangan mag-body-body uh, ako sa kanila. At least, yun naman yun ah. Magbe-benefit ako sa kanila. Sino kaya dito ang pwedeng magamit sa ganito? Sasamahan ko sila. At least, magagamit ko sila. Hello? Sino kaya ang pwede makasamahan dito? At least, magkakaano kami, body-body. You know what? I tell you, God is, is not a respecter of person. If the love of God is in your heart, hindi ka pipili ng tao? Most of the time, your heart is for the poor. Not after the rich people. Remember, idolatry is not only about worshiping pagan gods, but it is also about no longer following God. Why? Because you follow the world. Why? Because you follow the dictates of your flesh. That is idolatry. You, you will follow anything but God. God will, will speak to your heart. God will convict you. And then you will just resist that and follow the desires of your flesh. That is idolatry. It's not only worshiping pagan gods, but it is also about no longer following God. How many times have you fallen to the worship of what? Drugs, sex, possessions, properties, alcohol, relationships, self, pride, unforgiveness. Tuwing nakikita ko yung tao niyan, naku. Hurts, rebellion, maliciousness, maliciousness, unkind thought towards another, hypocrisy, pagkukunwari, spiritual pride, and so on and so on. Alam niyo na po. This is idolatry. Anything that goes between you and God is an idol. Ano man ang nangunguna sa relasyon mo sa Panginoon, ito'y isang Diyos-Diyosan. Hello? Nandiyan ba yun? 
Okay. Does God bring hardship upon us? Paano naman, pastora? Ang dami naman namin kahirapan nararanasan sa buhay. Sa palagay nyo, kayo lang ba? <laughs> Tayong lahat. Walang exempted dyan. Hosea is not saying that God Himself is the cause of our torn lives. Our turning away from God is the cause. Hosea said that God had both torn and endured them. He's not saying that God was being malicious or hateful. What Hosea is saying is that the people brought their situation upon themselves. God will sacrifice things in this mortal life to get your and my attention. Are you in a situation that you don't understand? Tayo ba ay nasa sitwasyon na hindi natin naunawaan? Tapos naawa tayo sa ating sarili. Panginoon, ba't ako na lang, ako na lang. Buti pa si paring ganito at si kumaring ganito. Kami naghihirap. Are you in a situation that you don't understand? You're confused? He will touch anything that concerns you. Your family, your job, any relationship, your financial situation, your marriage, anything. He will do that. He will touch it just to get your and my attention. Kayo po ba'y nandyan pa? He will use any means necessary to draw you back to Him. Ito po'y panawagan ng Panginoon. It is the call of God. It is an invitation of God. He will do anything that's just to draw us back to Him. Sometimes this means that He takes people to the bottom before they will look up to Him. Kailangan mo niyang ibaba ang isang tao bago mo na tumingala mulit sa Kanya. The people had brought disaster upon themselves because they walk away from God. Because of disobedience. Sabi po ng salita ng Diyos, Be sure, be sure your sins will find you out. There are consequences to be paid. Meron pong dapat pagbayaran kapag tayo lumayo sa Diyos. Pero hindi lang yun. Sinabi rin niya, He will heal our torn lives. Siya rin ang magpapagaling. How often have we begun, have we been torn up by the messes that we get ourselves into? God will allow us to make our own choices. Diba? Out of your heart comes your desire. Out of that desire comes your choice. Out of that choice comes your eternal destiny. So, God will allow us to make our own choice. Our own choices. He never forces us to do anything we don't want to do. The more we disobey, the more we will suffer. The more we will be torn down into pieces. Ano pang sinasabi ng talatang yun? He will bind our wounded hearts. Amen? He will heal our torn lives and then He will bind our wounded hearts. Each one of us has been injured in the course of life. We have been wounded. Sino po dito ang nasaktan na? Ako po. Sino po? Ah, walang nasasaktan dito. Okay. Nasaktan na tayo, di ba? We have been wounded. We have been hurt. And because we focus on those hurts and are in rebellion against God and people, the more we are being destroyed by our hardness of heart to revenge, and this is rebellion. Literally, what Jose is talking about is to be beaten up. We all felt like we have been beaten up by life. Walang humpay, walang humpay na pangyayaring paulit-ulit sa buhay natin. Many walk through life with open emotional and spiritual wounds. Alin niyo po, this week, we prayed for somebody who is suffering from stage 4 cancer. Nandun po kami sa bahay nila. 
And uh, this uh, person is really um, discouraged po, uh, depressed. Palaging namamaga ang kanyang mata dahil iyak siya ng iyak. And then I'm praying habang nandun po kami. May isa ring pastor na dumating at may isa pang pastor ang dumating. So kaming tatlong pastor na to, we were there just to encourage her. To lift her up. Pero makita niyo po ang countenance niya talagang down na down ng tao nito. And I was praying after dinner po sa bahay nila, I was asking God, Panginoon, turo niyo po sa akin kung dapat kong sabihin sa kanya para siya'y totally ma-delivered, sabi ko. At kami po yung nandoon, yung isang pastora, sabi niya, go back to the word. Tama po yung sinabi niya, when you go back to the word, lalakas ang iyong pananampalataya. Ganun din po yung sinabi ng pastor. Tama, si pastor, let, sabi niya, yung pastor ang iyon, let's go back to the word. Sabi niya ganun. Then I was praying in my heart. Sabi ko, Panginoon, give me a wisdom. Tapos, nagpasimula po ako nagsalita. Sabi ko, alam mo, sabi ko, hindi lingid ang katapatan ng Diyos sa iyong buhay. Sa mga nakaraan, nakita ko kung papaano kumilos ang Diyos sa iyong buhay. Kung papaano ka talaga, talaga naranasan mo, naguumapaw ka sa presensya at kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Lubos ka ng kagalakan, sabi ko. Minahal mo, naglingkod ka sa Panginoon. Pero along the way, di mo nakayanan, sabi ko. At ngayon, sabi ko, alam mo, hindi sapat ang humingi ng tawad sa Panginoon. Kailangan humingi rin tayo ng deliverance. Forgiveness is not enough. We need also to be delivered. We always ask forgiveness, but we are not being changed. Why? Because we are not totally delivered from sin. But we need to be forgiven and also to be delivered from sin. Sabi ko, sa taong ito, you know what? In my heart, sabi ko, I'm saying this with love dahil mahal kita. Kailangan kang magpatawad sa iyong puso. Meron kang hindi mapatawad sa iyong buhay. And at that moment na sinabi ko yon, umiyak po ang tao, nanginig ang kanyang buong katawan, nag-shake po siya, uh, and at she started speaking in tongues. At iyak na siya ng iyak and at the same time speaking in tongues. At sabi niya, meron nga akong hindi mapatawad. Sabi ko, patawarin mo siya. So that night, nanalangin kami, pinatawad niya ang taong yun. Tapos tinawagan ko po yung asawa niya. Nagyakapan silang mag-asawa at nagpatawaran din po silang mag-asawa. Alam niyo po, What a wonderful scene. Nakita po namin nito. Nandun po si na Pastor Albert, si Sister Miriam. And we were all crying. Sa restoration, deliverance, forgiveness na ginawa ng Panginoon. And after that po, uh, nakita namin nag-iba yung mukha niya. Talagang naliwanag po yung mukha niya. Nag-change yung kanyang countenance. And then, uh, this week, after a few days, tumawag po yung asawa niya. Sabi niya, uh, biglang uh, nagno-normal ngayon ang kanyang dugo. Amen? So, something is happening, sabi ng asawa niya. So, napakahalaga. Hello? Kayo po ba'y nandyan? Napakahalaga na tayo maging malaya. Amen? Amen? It's It's very easy to travel light. Walang dala-dala. Walang excess baggage. Amen. Walang kabigatan sa puso. Tayo malaya. Amen. Nagpatawad. The promise that Hosea reminds the people of Israel here is that God will both heal the hurting and bring wholeness to the wounded. Amen. Ito pong nangyari sa taong ito. Let us come to Him in humility and repentance and tore our garments and wear sackcloth and put on ashes 
This symbolizes repentance po. Tayo manumbalik loob sa Panginoon na may pagsisisi sa ating puso, na may lubos na pagpapakumbaba. Alam niyo po yung humility in simple term, ang meaning, the meaning of humility in simple term. You are, you are content in whatever situation God places you. They will shout at you. They will malign you. You are content. Hello? That is humility. You will not react. Hallelujah? Wala tang hallelujah dyan. <laughs> hallelujah! Amen. You are content in whatever situation God places you. They think of negative things against you. You are content. Sabi nga ng isang pastor. Alimbawa po, sabi niya, patay na tao to. Murahin ko ng murahin ang taong yan. Hindi siya kiki po. Purihin ko ng purihin ang taong yan. Hindi rin siya kiki po. Sipain ko yan, saktan ko yan. Hindi rin siya kiki po. Bigyan ko siya ng napakaraming blessing. Hindi rin siya kiki po. Kasi patay eh. Amen? Kasi patay. Galatians 2.20 We need to live a crucified life. Hallelujah. Hello. Pahina na pong pahina ang yung amen. Pag napakaganda, patungkol sa blessing, naku, mapapayo ko yung kakagulisak amen. Pag sa kamatayan, hallelujah. We need to live a crucified life. Amen. And what? A life what? Daily. Daily repentance, humility, brokenness that we really come into the realization that we stink. When we realize that we stink, tayo bumabaho na because of the sin that dwells in us. Wherever we go, we spread the aroma of sin that dwells in us. That's why we are always in trouble. No one wants to be near us because we stink. Walang taong nais lumapit sa atin dahil nangangamoy. Ang amoy ng kasalanan, ang kabahuan ng kasalanan sa buhay natin. Unless we repent, we need to repent. Not only repent, but we need to be delivered from sin. Amen. Okay. An invitation of restoration. Anong oras na ba? Okay. Ilang minutes na lang po at uh, tingnan kong may, may tutuloy ko ito sa susunod na linggo. Okay. Hanggang doon na lang muna po. Okay. Kailangan po natin magsisi. Kailangan po natin manumbalik loob sa Panginoon. Kailangan natin mapalaya sa hawak ng kasalanan sa ating buhay. Pinangako ng Diyos, Siya ang magpapagaling sa lahat ng mga sugat natin sa puso na nagdulot sa atin ng makaimpaktong pag-uugali. Alam niyo po, ang malayang tao, kagaya nga na sinabi ko kanina, siya patay na. Alam ko po, hindi ito minsanan. Ito'y isang proseso. Ang paborito naping verse is Galatians 2.20. Napakahirap po na gawin ito, but it's very rewarding kapag ito'y ating ginawa. Why? Kasi ikaw ang pinakamalayang tao dito sa sanglibutan. Wala kang daladala. Can we stand please? Can I ask the music people, yung mga music team po natin?
Revival will not come unless we repent. Uh, maging makatotohanan na po sana tayo. Alam niyo po, ang hirap na sa, alam niyo po ba, posible sa isang tao na magkaroon ng double personality. Meron pa pong triple, meron pa pong multiple personality. Rinesearch ko po to sa, sa, sa YouTube. At kapag lumala na po ito sa isang tao, ano po, no, talagang nakita ko sa video kung anong nangyayari sa mga taong ito. Kung ang, yung isa, ang tunay na pangalan niya ay ang tunay niyang pagkatao ay Cindy. Habang po siya nagsasalita, I am Cindy. You know, yesterday we went here and then bigla po siyang gaganon. Oh, hi, I'm Paula. Nagbago na na naman po. Tapos bigla na naman po siyang gaganon. I'm Catherine. Multiple personality. Ito po'y pwedeng mangyari sa tao. Hindi, ako, hindi po ako nagbibiro. And, kapag hindi tayo, kasi po kaya nangyayari ito sa tao, because, ayaw nilang magbago. Pinipilit nila ang kanilang sariling kalooban. At, lalala po ito, eventually, they will be possessed by demons. Dahil may hawak na po ang Diablo sa kanilang personalidad. Because they don't want to change. Ayaw nilang magsisi. So, dito, nakaharap sila. Ganito yung pinapakita nila. Tapos nakatalikod sila. Iba yung ginagawa. Nagmamanipulate against sa kanyang kausap kanina. And that is a double personality. Nice ko po. Na, na, alam niyo po kaya ako sinasabi to Dahil panahon na para tayo magbago. Panahon na para tayo magbago. Let us ask the Lord to come to us. Na siya dumating sa atin. At siya, at kung pwede lang ipasok niya ang kanyang kamay sa buong pagkatao natin. At hawakan niya ang ating puso. At habang inahawakan niya ang ating mga puso, alisin niya ang anumang hindi magandang motive po dyan. At ito'y magagawa lang ng Panginoon kung ating siyang pahihintulutan. Sabihin natin, Panginoon, hayaan mo yung kamay ng mga hawakan sa aking puso. Kung matigas man ang aking puso ngayon, palambutin mo, O Diyos, ayoko na. Ayoko na sa kaplastikan. Ayoko na yung pagkukunwari, O Diyos, kung saan ako nakaharap, kung ano. Ayoko na ng ganito. Panginoon, patawarin mo ako, ako'y nasaktan. Tulungan mo ako magpatawad. Makalimutan ko ang mga bagay na ginawa ng mga taong ito sa aking buhay at hayaan mo yung pag-ibig ang siyang magpagaling sa akin. Ang pag-ibig mo na may kakambal na pagsakripisyo para sa, para sa ibang tao. For the sake of others. Alam niyo po, hindi darating ang revival sa ating iglesia kung hindi tayo magbabago, kung hindi tayo magsisisi, kung hindi tayo manumbalik loob sa Panginoon, pagkatapos noon, sabihin mo, Panginoon, Panginoon, ikaw ang maglusaw sa matigas na puso nito at hayaan mong umusubong muli ang pag-ibig ko sa iyo. Alam niyo po, kung tayo umiibig sa Diyos, ang gaampong lumambot ng ating puso. Amen. Kaya sa umagang ito po, habang tayo umaawit ng papuri sa Diyos, nais ko pong tignan po natin ang ating mga loob, ang ating mga puso. At halongkatin po natin ang mga ito. Search our hearts today. And ask God to show us, ipakita sa atin ang Panginoon kung saan tayo nagkulang. Listen to the song. Habang po kayo nakikinig sa awit na to. Ask the Lord, Panginoon, ano pa yung nandyan sa loob? And then after that, humingi kayo ng tawad. Just think that it is you and God alone today. Don't think of the person on your right and your left. 
in front of you or behind you, just you and the Lord. Ikaw lang at ang Diyos. Then ask God to search your hearts. And ask God to bring that conviction. And then ask for forgiveness. After asking for forgiveness, ask God to deliver you. Amen. Can we sing that song, please? Hallelujah. Just close your eyes and listen to the song and then and then ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Search your heart.
Oh, 